Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 18. Today we'll discuss the notion of prime numbers. Let's begin. Here's the question that I want to ask you first. How many factors, how many factors does, how many factors does 9 have? Now what does that question mean when somebody asks you how many factors does 9 have or how many factors does 14 have or how many factors does 100 have? What does it mean? It means how many numbers are there that we can divide 9 evenly by? 9, 9 can be divided by how many numbers evenly? Now here's the thing, when we want to list a, when we want to list factors of any numbers, it's always a good idea, it's always a good idea to start out our list with one. Because any number can be divided by one, and you will get a whole number. Therefore one, one is a factor of any number. Similarly, it's always a good idea to end our list with the number itself. We start our, our list with one, and we always finish our list with the number itself. And then we put down anything in between that belongs there. It turns out that there is only one other number. It turns out that there is only one other number that we can divide 9 by. 9 divided by 3 is going to be a whole number. 9 divided by 1 is going to be a whole number. And 9 divided by 9 is going to be a whole number. There is no other number. So it turns out how many factors does 9 have? The answer is 9 has 3 factors. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. How many factors? How many factors does 10 have? 10 can be, can be divided by 1, of course. 10 can be evenly divided by 2. 10 can be evenly divided by 5. 10 can be evenly divided by the number 10 itself. 10 has, 10 has 4 factors. Let's do one more. How about 16? How about 16? Well, 16... 16 again can be divided by 1. Any number can be divided by 1, obviously. 16 we can divide it by 2. 16 can be divided by 4. 16 can also be divided by 8. And 16, of course, can be divided by 16 itself. The list is always going to begin with 1, and the list is always going to end with the number itself. In addition to the 1 and the number itself, there are three other factors. 16 has. 16 has three other factors. In other words, how many factors does 16 have? The answer is 16. 16 has five factors. 16 has five factors. Let's continue. Let's continue our discussion. How about, how about 2? How many factors does 2 have? 2, turns out, has only two factors. There are only two numbers that we can divide 2 by evenly. We can divide 2 by 1 and we can divide 2 by itself. 2, how many factors does 2 have? 2 has, 2 has only two factors. Only two factors. What about 3? Three? 3 can be divided by itself and 1. What about 5? How many factors does 5 have? 5 also has only two factors, one and itself. One and itself. What about what about seventeen? Seventeen has also only two factors. There are only two numbers that we can divide seventeen by the one and the number itself. If the number if the number has exactly two factors it has to be exactly two factors not at least two factors not at most two factors if it has exactly two factors if the number has exactly two factors then that number that number is called a prime number and that number is called a prime number now in most places, in most places, in most textbooks, in most textbooks you will also find the definition of prime number 
articulated a little bit differently, articulated a little bit differently. This is how you will find in most textbooks. Most textbooks will tell you that uh, a prime number, a prime number, prime number is a number that can be evenly divided only by one and itself. That can be evenly divided by one and itself. This definition that we just put in the blackboard is the exact same thing as this one, just put a little bit differently. Saying that a number can only be divided by one in itself, a number that can be evenly divided that can be evenly divided by only one in itself is the same thing as saying that the number has exactly two factors. If the number has exactly two factors, then the, that number is called a prime number. The two factors being the two. I, I did not finish the job. The two factors being the one and the number itself. Then and the number itself. Those are the only two factors it has. We just saw that. 2 had only 2 factors, 3 had only 2 factors, 1 and 3, 5 had only 2 factors, 1 and 5, and therefore those are prime numbers. Those are prime numbers. Now when we're dealing with, when we're dealing with prime numbers, there are 4 critical points that you must keep in mind. 4 critical points we must keep in mind. 4 critical points. Let's list them, let's list them, shall we? Number 1. We already saw number 1. Number one we already saw, which is two. Two is the only even number that is a prime number. Two is the only even number that's a prime number because what's the prime number? A prime number is something that can be divided evenly only in one and itself. Well, the only number that Two meets the, meets that condition. The only number that we can divide two by evenly into two can be divided evenly by one, which will give you a whole number, or you can divide two by itself and it will give you the whole number. There exists no other number that you can divide two by. In other words, two has only two factors, one and itself. That's another way of looking at it. Two has only two factors, one and itself. Because of the fact that two meets the condition, it qualifies as a prime number, despite the fact that it is in fact an even number. No other even number will qualify as, an, as, as a prime number because if it's an even number you can divide it by 2. 4 is not a prime number because divide in addition to in addition to 1 and 4 you can divide 4 also by 2. 6 is not an even number. 6 is not a prime number because forget about the fact that you can divide it by 3 also but it's an even number which means you can divide it by 2 in addition in addition to itself and 6. No other even number qualifies as a prime number. 2 is the only even number that is a prime number. Number two, we have four. Remember, we talked about four. I need the room so we can have to erase all of this thing. Let's let's continue here. So two is the only number, only only even number that is a prime number. No other even number is a prime number. Number two. Number two. One, one is not a prime number. One is not a prime number. Why? Why is 1 not a prime number? What do we say a prime number is? A prime number, if a number has exactly two factors, a prime number is the one, a prime number is the one that has exactly two factors, itself and 1. How many factors does 1 have? 1 has only, only one factor. The only number that you can divide evenly 1 by is 1 itself. It has only one factor. 1 has only, only, only one factor. In order for it to be a prime number, it needs to have exactly two factors. It needs to have exactly two factors. One does not have two factors. One only has one factor. Therefore, one is not a prime number. Keep that in mind. Number two. Point number three. Point number three. Point number three. What about zero? What about zero? Well, zero is not a prime number. Zero is not a prime number for several reasons. Zero is not prime. Not a prime number. Zero is, zero is 
not a prime number for several reasons. Most important of the most important of it being, we'll talk about three points. Okay. Most important of that being is that the first point is that prime numbers, prime numbers are subset subset of prime numbers are subset of what is known as natural numbers. Tell you what, instead of instead of keeping these two points here and occupying all that space, let's erase them so that we have more room to maneuver. Okay. But remember, a prime number is a number that can, can that can be divided only by itself and one, or if you like, a prime number is one that has exactly two factors, one and itself. One and itself. There are two ways of articulating the exact same concept. Point number what about question was what about zero? Zero is not a prime number. Zero is not a prime number for several reasons. Number the most important of that being is that prime numbers are subset of natural numbers. What are natural numbers? Natural numbers. Natural numbers. Listen carefully now. Natural numbers are so called because those are the numbers that human being developed first. Those are the numbers that human being came up with first, thought of first, because we needed them. We needed them for our daily lives. Natural numbers are natural numbers are one, two, three, four, five, so forth. They are whole numbers. They are whole, they are whole positive numbers. They are whole positive numbers. Before human being had the intelligence to think of negative numbers, before we had the intelligence, before we had thought of a quantity of zero, before we were smart enough to think of numbers in terms of odd and even, before we thought of rational or irrational numbers, before any of that happened, the very first numbers that we developed are what are known as natural numbers. Natural numbers start with one. They are all positive numbers because at that point we were not bright enough, we were not intelligent enough to think of quantities being negative. Now why are they called natural numbers? Do you know why are they called natural numbers? Why are they called natural numbers? Because these are the numbers that we developed for our daily living when people went to the market. These are the numbers that were used in commerce. That's, that's what I mean here. These were the numbers that were used in commerce, in business, in everyday dealing, in the market. Nobody, nobody went to the market and said, nobody got up in the morning and said, today I'm going to go to the market in the village. I'm going to go to the market with my zero sheep and I'm going to sell them for zero dollars each and hopefully if things go if things go well i'm going to make a profit of 0 dollars nobody said that they didn't have a need for zero they didn't have need for zero because they didn't deal with zero nobody got around going went around selling uh, zero cows it didn't exist until somebody came up with that notion it was a guy from india an indian indian guy uh, who came up with the idea of zero and then let, later on that idea was copied by the Arabs in the Muslim world, which is why, and then later on from there, from, from the Muslim world, from the Arabs, it was finally carried, uh, carried over to Europe and it was copied by the Europeans. And finally the Europeans understood the notion of zero. But originally it was in India that the concept of zero was developed, which was later on copied, as I said, by the Arabs. And then finally it was the Europeans who understood it. Which is, prob which, which is not probably, which is why zero in English language Zero is also referred to in English language as Sifr. Sifr is an Arabic word, which simply means zero. I'm digressing here big time. We not this topic is this video is not about zeros. So I don't know why I didn't cover all this thing when we talked about zero, which was yesterday. Yesterday on day number 17, we actually made a video about zero. I should have covered all this thing in, in that video. I don't know why I didn't do it, but anyway. What, what the point we are trying to understand is that zero is not a prime number. Zero is not a prime number because prime numbers are subset of natural numbers. In order for a number to be, a, in order for a number to qualify as a prime number, it needs to be a positive whole number. Is what we are trying to say. All we are trying to say is that in order for a number to be a number for, in order for a number to qualify as a prime number, it has to be one of the whole positive numbers. Prime numbers are a subset of natural numbers. Zero is not a natural number. Therefore. Zero is not a prime number. That's one reason. 
The second reason, I'm going to give you three reasons why zero is not considered a prime number. The second reason why zero is not considered a prime number is because zero is an even number. Zero is an even number. And I'm really not going to spend the time here right now to discuss the, this notion here as to why zero is an even number. If you're interested in learning why zero is an even number, watch yesterday's video, day number 17. The topic of the video is let's talk about zero. Let's talk about zero. Zero is an even number, and of course, if it's an even number, how can it be a prime number? The only even number that's a prime number is a two. No other even number can be a prime number. Zero is an even number. The third problem, third reason why, third reason why zero is not a prime number is because zero has how many factors? What does it mean when you say how many factors it has? For example, for example, uh, ten has how many factors? 10 has how many factors that Sam is asking, that means we can divide 10 by how many numbers? How many numbers that you can divide 10 evenly by? Well, we can divide 10 by 1 evenly, that will be a whole number. We can divide 10 by 2, we can divide 10 by 5, we can divide 10 by 10. All of these are going to be whole numbers. Therefore, 10 has 4 factors. Factors of 10s are, factors of factors of 10s are 1, 2, 5 and 10. Question is, question is, 0, 0 has how many factors? The answer is 0, 0 has infinite factors. 0 has infinite factors because 0 can be divided by any numbers. You can zero divide 0 by 7 and it will give you 0 which is, which, which, which is a whole number. We talked about it yesterday, 0 is a whole number. It's very important that you watch day number 17 before you watch this video. Which is why I covered the concept of zero in the, in the last video because zero comes in here. Zero can be divided by seven, zero can be divided by 37, zero can be divided by 12 point, uh, 12, so it could be divided by 120. You can divide zero by any number. Zero has infinite factors. And of course, prime number cannot have infinite factors. Prime numbers can only have two factors, itself and one. So for all those reasons, Zero is not a prime number. Finally, last point before I wrap up the video. Remember we talked about four critical points. Four points we talked about. Four points and today and this is our last point here. Negative numbers. Negative numbers. Negative numbers are not prime numbers. Not prime numbers for two reasons. What are the two reasons why negative numbers are not considered prime numbers? Well, one reason we already talked about it, because negative numbers, negative numbers are not, not natural numbers. They have to be part of the natural numbers. Prime numbers are subset of natural numbers. Negative numbers are not natural numbers. They are not natural numbers because, again, nobody got, in the got up in the morning in the village and said, today I'm going to go and sell negative five cows. It didn't exist. For accounting purposes, the only thing that we could think of were whole positive numbers. They had to be positive numbers and they had to be whole numbers because very rarely people got up in the morning and said, I'm going to sell one third of the cow. Do you understand? So they have to be whole numbers. That's one reason. Negative numbers are not part of the natural numbers, therefore they cannot be prime numbers. Second reason is that, second reason is that negative numbers, negative numbers can be, can be divided evenly by negative 1. For example, negative 5. How many factors does negative 5 have? Negative 5 can be divided by negative 5, of course. Any number can be divided by itself and you will get a whole number. Negative 5 can be divided by 1 and of course you will get negative 5, that's a whole number. But negative 5 can also be divided by negative 1 and you will get a whole number. You will get a whole number. So in addition, in addition to itself and 1, in addition to itself and 1, negative numbers, even if it happens to be a prime number with a negative sign in front of it, even if 5 is a prime number, but if it has a negative sign in front of it, now it has a third factor, third factor being negative 1. And a prime number cannot have three factors. Prime number must have exactly two factors, itself and 1. Therefore, negative numbers are not prime numbers. Now listen, what we're going to do to, tomorrow, 
in lesson number 19 and lesson number 20, lesson number 19 and lesson number 20, we're going to actually make a list of prime numbers. In tomorrow's lesson, lesson number 19, we'll do prime numbers 1 through 50. And in day after tomorrow, we're going to do the prime numbers 51 through 100. And what we're going to learn in those two videos is how to spot a prime number, how to recognize a prime number. Because sometimes people make uh, one, or, one or two mistakes. Either they look at the prime number, they don't, they don't realize that it's a prime number, or they end up picking something that looks to them as a prime number, but in fact it's not a prime number. You have to be able to learn, you have to be able to recognize a prime number when you encounter one. And we'll learn that, uh, we'll learn that concept, as I said, tomorrow, prime numbers 1 through 50, and day after tomorrow, prime numbers 51 through 100. Make sure you watch those two videos. But today's video was simply to cover the notion of a prime number, what exactly is a prime number, and why some, some numbers are not considered prime numbers. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.